this video we're going to learn about partial fraction decomposition and this is a little bit of Algebra 1 review. Uh, when we were in Algebra 1 we learned how to add unlike fractions. We would do so by making a common denominator. So our common denominator for x minus 3 and x plus 5 would of course be x minus 3 times x plus 5. That means that our first fraction we need to multiply top and bottom by x plus 5. If I do multiply top and bottom by x plus 5, then 1 times x plus 5 is indeed x plus 5. And then the second fraction, we need to multiply x plus 5 by x minus 3 top and bottom. When we multiply the 4 into the x minus 3, we would get 4x minus 12. Now in Algebra 1, when we combined like terms, we would get 5x minus 7 over, and then we could FOIL the bottom and get x squared plus 2x minus 15. Now why did we do this Algebra review? Because with partial fraction decomposition, we're going to go backwards. We're going to start with the answer, and we're going to separate it into an addition problem. So let's take a look at that. Here's my same problem backwards. I have 5x minus 7 over x squared plus 2x minus 15, and I'd like to separate that and decompose it. So I'm going to start by factoring the bottom. The bottom factors as x plus 5 and x minus 3. So the process is to start off by creating an addition problem using the x plus 5 and the x minus 3. Now we don't know what the numerators are. We're going to designate the first one with the letter A and the second one with the letter B. Order does not matter. We could go ahead and flip-flop the A and the B. Now we're going to try and make like fractions. So in order to make like fractions, notice that the first fraction is missing the x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 3. The second fraction is missing the x plus 5. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 5. Now if I do that, top and bottom, and in theory I should show that, but I tend to not show that on the bottom, then we learn in Algebra 1 that now we have a rational equation and we can cross out the bottom because the bottoms are now all the same. So if we look at what we have left on the top, we have a times x minus 3 plus b times x plus 5, and that has to equal the numerator in the original problem, 5x minus 7. Okay, so now we need to solve for a and b. Let's choose some convenient x values for this problem that will create zeros. For x minus 3, if I choose x equals 3, that would create a zero on this term. So I've got 0 plus b. Now I chose 3, so I would have 3 plus 5 is equal to, and over here I would have 5 times 3 minus 7. Well, that gives me 8b is equal to 8, and b is 1. So now I know one of my numerators. Let's do the same thing for the other term. If I want to make x plus 5 a 0, I would choose x is negative 5. If I plug in a negative 5 for my x's, I would end up with a negative 8a plus a 0. Now I've got 5 times negative 5 is negative 25 minus 7. Negative 25 minus 7 would be negative 32, so a would be 4. Now if I go back to my original with a is 4 and b is 1, notice I have a is 4, so that would be 4 over x plus 5 plus my b was 1, 1 over x minus 3. And if we look at this, and we look at the previous page, notice we have the same.
problem. We'll use partial fractions when we do certain integrals.